So you're not allowed to sell wild sturgeon? You're not allowed to sell wild sturgeon, you're not allowed to sell wild caviar. Well, it's something like the cocaine of the sea? It's, it's illegal? Well, it's it, the, 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 the farm way is not illegal, so... Um, you know, no, but I don't I'm talking know if about the illegal some, way. Uh, some, uh, some farm cocaine that's legal that uh, none of them will know yeah, about. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> well, hello. I'm Mayhem Loren, and I have my man Alex here, caviar expert. Nice to have you, man. And we have Jack. Jack from ID. He's no expert. And we have someone in the middle, myself. Now we're going to talk about caviar. If we're talking about caviar, let's talk about you know, how it's done first. So there's no more wild caviar on the market since about, I would say, 10 years. I mean, there is some black market in Russia that will have some uh, wild caviar, but I wouldn't recommend it. The farmer's caviar today is very well done. There's some in Russia, some in China, some in Europe, some in the US. They all produce a very different caviar. And that's why caviar is so fun. It changed from tin to tin. It, 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 it evolved from year to year. There's some good season, some bad season. It's, it's really amazing. Can I hear a little bit about your caviar background? I guess I've had it when quite drunk on vodka, but I wasn't born with like a caviar spoon in my mouth. I know it's from a really, really big fish. The sturgeon produces caviar, I would say year seven to 10, and then you need 10 to 15 years for your farm to produce That's a long anything. time. Yeah, without getting any money back, it's a very long time, yeah. It's like having a child until they get working papers at 14. <laughs> until you put them to the work, I like that. I think it's comparable too to like certain strains of marijuana. Some take longer for harvest, and that, I didn't know that, that, that costs more. I didn't know that the longer you wait, yeah, you know, so. We select the caviar from the best farm, and then we bring it to our facility and mature the caviar, and that's really what gives the, the, the caviar its so really you have to wait depth. Oh, yeah. 12 years and then age it after that? Yes. So here we have Kaluga Ta Imperial from China. Here we have Ocetra Imperial. This farm is from Israel. And on the last one, we have Ocetra Royal, and this one is from Bulgaria. Got it. And here we have the Kaluga, but a different use on the bread. Do we have any Russian floating around? No. No, no Russian caviar. And you're holding back on us, huh? No, well, you know, the, the Russian uh, farms uh, are not really ready to, to produce right now. Uh, some of them produce great caviar, but we haven't decided to work with them yet. So Kaluga Imperial, boom. And now let you open this one, the Royal. So this one is Royal, this one Bulgaria, and this one China. I know we have a mother of pearl spoon. We do. I know we're supposed to eat caviar with mother of pearl. I know you're not supposed to use silver. Can you explain why? Don't use silver. It reacts badly with the, any eggs, actually. And you have a very bitter flavor coming with it. It's very, uh, it's, it's not very good. It's kind of uh, like me. I wear gold because silver gives me eczema. Well, you know, and, but you can you use any You don't want a mouthful of eczema. You don't. Uh, and <laughs> but, you know, you can use any other metal. Uh, gold, metal, or just tiny steel will be just fine. Just not uh, silver, okay. exactly. When you put the caviar in your mouth, you want to crush the eggs with your tongue on your palate. So let's start by the Kaluga. Has a very balanced flavor, toasted bread type of flavor. Yeah, it's really mm. subtle. I thought it was going to be like, pow, fish. Mm. Is the fat when it like explodes in your mouth, your whole mouth feels like right? it's more like eating butter, but not in a gross way. No, exactly, not in a gross way. There's no gross way to eat butter. Well, handfuls of butter got me these shoulders. <laughs> It's not salty, it's not strong. There's always a beautiful finish on it. Like, what do you think people assume caviar tastes like that have never had it before? Taste and flavor is always very hard to debate. Most people I've, I've, I've seen that tell me that they don't like caviar, usually they've had very strong, very salted caviar. That black market Russian caviar. Maybe. You know, that caviar at the bathtub. You know, good caviar is supposed to be like this. Get it by the bucket in Rigo Park. Well, yes, you know, the runaway, the runaway. <laughs> Got you. But we are getting more flavor out of the Ocetras. The Ocetra Imperial Royal have more punch, have more flavor. Let's get started. So the longer you age it, the more... It, it depends on the, 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 the caviar we're talking about, but usually the more you mature your caviar, the more flavor you'll get out of it. Wow. I love this. Right? I love this. A little saltier. Mm -hmm. A little briny, yeah, nice briny, brininess to it. That one tastes more like what I imagine caviar to taste like. Yeah. Mm. 
right? The crushing works, it kind of like... It really de develops the aroma in your mouth. You have all the oil playing with your tongue and that's really what you want. Let's try also the, the last one. You're going to see is a little stronger. The color is a little darker, eggs are smaller, but it's a very interesting caviar. Shout out to all my Bulgarians. They really have one of uh, the, the, the more interesting farm. Mm. Right? Yeah, it's kind of sweet. I don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I noticed that we all took the caviar straight out the tin. And in my opinion, that's the best way to have caviar. How do you feel about people that put too many toppings on caviar or add so many things to it? Well, you know, ca caviar is, a, is, a, is an expensive food item. So you want to temper the least possible with it. And when you do temper with it, you need to do it with care and with love. When you buy true delicious caviar, it doesn't need anything. Gotcha. Traditionally, it's used because before the caviar was salted a lot more than it is now. They used the, the capers and onions and creme fraiche to kind of tone that saltiness. Nowadays, it's it's so subtle, so nice that you really There's don't no need, need it. There's no need for anything, got it. What do you think of restaurants that do like caviar on fried chicken and shit like that? My take on it is very simple. You buy your caviar, you do whatever you want with it. We had it in the purest form. We enjoyed our caviar right out the tin. Now let's get some toast points, some Bellinis, creme fraiche, Frank's Red Hot, champagne, vodka. Vodka would be my, my drink. Of Snapple. How, how do you feel about Snapple pairing with the. Uh, I, I with think that? vodka is better. I mean, maybe okay. it's uh, vodka and Snapple. Let's go. What do we have here? Champagne and vodka. I love that. I didn't know this was a Christmas episode. Bellini, creme fraiche, and caviar. It's a healthy portion. It is. That's what it's considered a very traditional way to eat caviar. This is art. I don't even want to eat this. It's beautiful, huh? I want to frame this, hang it up in the living room. But it tastes better than it looks. Right, let's go. Right? Yeah, it's incredible. But this one, burrata and caviar. I've been eyeing this burrata for 15 minutes. This looks amazing. A little difficult. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I initially made this for Jack, but I think I'm going to eat this myself. But at least you got an example of what to do yeah. after I eat. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Out of this world, it's a pairing from heaven. Go for it, and then eat the, take the toast point and take a bite. So the nuts and the, the burrata really bring out the, the nuttiness <laughs> right? of, the, the, of the caviar. It's all about combination and, and the, the, the respecting the balance of each, you know, each item really bring the nuttiness of the caviar. And I think having a little sip of champagne right after it make this complete. Cheers, gentlemen. Thank Cheers. you so much. Take a toast point and just yeah. put some of the, the, the caviar right on those toast points and take a bite. That's also kind of a very traditional way. It's actually my mom's favorite way of eating caviar. I haven't been this excited about toast since, well, ever. Mm. And now have a little sip of vodka before you have another bite. Because usually the vodka really cleans the palate between each bite and you really rediscover the, the, the flavor of caviar. It's very interesting. It really is. Generally not a big fan of vodka, but the combination between that and the caviar, it's, it's perfect. So I've heard that potato chips is a pairing. Am I right? Yes. As I said, you know, caviar is very versatile. It's very good anyway. You know, the crunch, the potato, you can't go wrong. You wouldn't put it on a Pringle, though, or like barbecue flavor. Why not? I mean, Why sure, not? it's you your know, caviar. It's your caviar, you do whatever you want with it. And it's gonna look great. What a healthy ration. Wow. That's, a, that's amazing. If it works, it works, you know, it doesn't need to be changed. The only rude thing you can do with caviar is not having it, you know? Well, I've evidently been rude for the past 30 years. <laughs> That's my favorite way we've done it so far. A crumb fresh drizzle? Yeah, with the, the chip is. The chips? Mm. So, I'd like a brief explanation of what we learned today. I I'd like to hear a caviar dissertation speech. Eat on something crunchy, I think, if you're gonna put it on anything. My big shock, caviar's not just from Russia. I thought it was only like ladies in fur hats, like wrestling with big fish. But it's not, it's from Israel and China mm -hmm. and Bulgaria, Bulgaria. Yeah, and place. Regal Park. Uh, yeah, in that bathtub. I don't know, I thought it'd be more scary. That sounds stupid, but I thought it would be like harder to enjoy. But as soon as I was eating it correctly, by kind of like really like gumming, mm -hmm. it was actually very delicious. It seemed more unattainable, but this was really, uh, the chip was what really took me to another. The, the chip really works. I mean, yeah. Speaking of the chip, I'm just, 
do while, it again. While we talk, I need more. You know, I think the big thing with caviar is don't be afraid of it. I mean, you're going to spend at least between $40 to $50 on a tin like this. So you want to be able to open it and see what you get. Get your money worth exactly what you would do with a car. You want to be able to test drive it. So you want the person that sells you the caviar to open the Always tin Always let you taste it. We'll never be mad at you if you come in and ask questions and be interested and want to try. That's the only way to do it. My favorite reaction is when someone comes in and tells you, oh, I hate caviar, and they try this and they love it. If you got anything from this episode, it should be that uh, you should eat caviar. You should go to Petrosian and buy caviar. You should put it on potato chips, bellinis, toast points. You should have creme fraiche. You should have it straight out the tin. And you should never have it out the bathtub. I love it. That's a great way to start the week. It works. Is this the start of the week? What day is it? Is it?